uh, let's start, Louis. Uh, maybe you can share about your experience po na or welcome our guest. Ganun. Yeah, I good morning po sa lahat po ng kasama natin today. Of course, there are a few familiar faces uh, in the panel. Uh, salamat po sa pag-unlock niya sa amin dito. No? Uh, you know, guys, I'm not used to these things, uh, but I appreciate the fact that you're here to support, support us. You know, me and Lara, the apprentice, in our journey sa apprentice. Yun po. Uh, we'll start receive, uh, taking questions from the media. If may questions po kayo, please use the raise hand feature ng Zoom so we can uh, call you. Pero unahin na natin to from Sir Mike Morillo ng Business World. Uh, question niya is, given the nature of the competition in The Apprentice, how did you come up with your game plan heading into it? And are things going the way you expected from your end? Wow, it's a very interesting question. Alam niyo, uh, thank you for the question, no? uh, Sir Mark Murillo. Tama po ba? Yeah, yeah. Interestingly, I have a student from University of Makati who is exactly named Mark Murillo. I don't know if you're related, but hello, Sir Mark. Um, that's a very interesting question because I didn't really have a game plan coming into the competition. Uh, and, and the reason why I didn't really have a game plan was because I didn't know what to expect. So the um, preparation ko dyan, uh, was quite simple. So I said that I'm just going to be the physical best, at my professional and mental best. Then along the way, I will um, adapt to the situation. Um, um, I think one key element kasi dito is that before I arrived in Singapore, hindi ko kilala kung sino yung mga competitors. I didn't even bother to check social media. Kasi I'm really, um, very active on social media. And uh, I, just, I just didn't know who, who applied in, 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 uh, in The Apprentice. The funny thing is, uh, and I, I think I can talk about this now because um, Lara is officially off the competition, because I actually met Lara at the airport. So she was the only person na talagang nakilala ko na, oh wow, she's also part of the apprentice. The reason why I met Lara at the airport was because we got held up by immigration. Ayaw kami paalisin. Yun yung actual first na challenge namin dito sa apprentice. Hindi kami makalipad. And uh, fortunately enough, we had the, the right documentation from the Singapore government, from one championship. Pero ang tagal namin po doon. I mean, we were really negotiating for the immigration officers to let us fly out during the uh, kasagsagan ng pandemia. So I hope that that answers your, your question, Sir Mark. Okay. Uh, may isa pang yeah. question si Sir Mike. Uh, how does the apprentice okay, uh, how does the apprentice experience stack up, stack up with your North Pole quest? Uh, okay. Mentally draining yung both uh, both experiences. The difference lang, the main difference, one of the main differences kasi, kung nasa North Pole ka, yung period of time na tumatakbo ka, nakakabaliw eh. Kasi pag tumigil ka, alam mong pwede kang maaksidente or pwede kang mamatay. You know? It's just, let's just call a spade a spade. Pwede kang maaksidente, pwede kang mamatay if you do not uh, manage your yourself. Um, kinaganda sa apprentice is wala kang risk na ganon. Although, syempre, ayaw mong matalo. And yung, yung, yung impact kasi nun sa self-esteem mo, iba rin yung level eh. Kasi dito, there's 16 of you are competing head to head, di ba? So imagine losing in front of other people who want the same uh, prize as you do. Dun sa North Pole, hindi ganun eh. Sa North Pole, while you are all running, you are co-competitors, everyone is helping each other finish. So yun yung, yun yung isang maganda doon, yung camaraderie ninyo as, as competitors slash participants of the North Pole Marathon. Ganun yung level. Dito kasi, um, well, lalabas siguro sa ibang episodes, nagsisimula na siyang lumabas, pero may mga agenda yung bawat candidates na ngayon ko lang actually na-realize na napanood ko rin yung, yung show. 
All right. Uh, last question from Sir Mike. What makes working in one and under Chatri a dream, a dream job for you? Okay. I always wanted to be part of a global organization. Really, that organization is something that I build myself or an organization that you know I'm part of because someone uh, invites me to join or I become part of it because I apply for it. And I think yung, yung vision ko na yon comes from the fact that I think tayo, yung Filipinos, and us as individuals, we can do so much more. Oh, kasi ganun yung, yung mindset ko lagi eh. Parang, what else can I do during my very limited time in this world? You know, I've been, give, I've been given several opportunities to excel and to also fail. And people have allowed me to fail so that I realize na, okay, marami pa pala akong dapat matutunan and marami pa akong dapat gawin. And eventually, once I'm able to do that, marami pa akong dapat tulungan. I think that working for one championship will give me a lot of resources to make, you know, a lot of impact sa mundo. You know, it, it, it sounds so brang out there, but I really think, especially in the realm of professional sports, whether it's mixed martial arts or esports, I have a lot to offer. And that's the reason why I, I want to be part of one championship. Because they embody the values that I also look up to. I also practice in my life. And Chantry is also an example of that, a very good role model of that. Yeah, thanks to me. Uh, we have Sir Monch. Hi, Sir Monch. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, I'm Monch Inares from Monster Chronicles. And uh, hello, everyone. Tessa, Keith, Bobang Barkada, Mia. And hi, Mr. Louis, my yes, idol. Sir. So anyway, uh, I just want to find out because you know, when you started this uh, roll call of friends to give you support to join this contest, no, I was one of them who shared your your. No, kaya kaya ka and it's because I believed in you. You know, when we first met in um, the, North the uh, FWD North Pole event, uh, I was already a fan because you had so much. You had so much. Uh, what's this? Um, strength in your character, in living. Imagine uh, from cancer surviving, tapos magno North Pole. So ngayon meron the apprentice. So my question is. What made you join The Apprentice? Okay, that's my first question. Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, uh, a lot of people naman who, who know me and who know what I've, uh, what I've been through also know that in my past life, uh, I was a professional mixed martial artist. And yeah. talagang first love ko yung, yung martial arts. No? Talagang dun ako natuto ng maraming bagay to help me recover, first of all, from my illness, knowing that I'm making a stable from cancer. And second of all, uh, sa pinagdaanan ko na, you know, I went through depression, I went through alcoholism, so marami akong pinagdaanan na ganong issues. And martial arts, basically because the, of the foundation of, of, you know, the yung taking care of yourself, your physicality of it, helped me go through that. When I left, Mixed martial arts, it was one of the biggest decisions that I've made in my life. And one of the most, let's just say, uh, disheartening decisions that I've made in my life. Kasi parang tinalikuran ko yung isang bagay that gave me so much to offer sa mga. And I went into a professional, uh, in, into my professional career, no? Dun sa field na from marketing to strategy, to um, purchasing and procurement. So yung mga yan, dinano kaya, pati operations. In the end, I realized na, teka lang, di ba? Ano pa pwede kong gawin sa buhay ko? So I made a promise that when I turn 40, I'm going to leave corporate, no matter where I am in, in my life, I'm going to leave it and start doing a business of my own. So I started doing procurement consulting. But when I was doing that, I wanted to also... Actually, in the back of my head, I also wanted to go back to the thing, stay one and go. 
I was 28. Because I left professional mixed martial arts when I was 28. So to, for 12 years, wala akong ginawa kundi pagtrabaho. Siguro the last three years of my... So when when it was like 15, I did triathlon. Pero I wasn't as complete as when I was in martial arts. So I actually uh, received an offer from one championship because uh, I, I went on one warrior series tryouts. Eh. I impressed uh, Mr. Rich Franklin and I got a call actually to be part of one warrior or uh, one championship for my very first fight. Guess what happened? One full marathon. So I was a very that was the second most difficult decision of my life. This is a story that not, not, not a lot of people know, but this is the reality. What am I going to do? And guess what? I chose to go to the North Pole Marathon, not only because I wanted to do the North Pole Marathon, but because it was my wife's dream to actually see the Aurora Borealis. Diba? So parang sabi ko, this is, this is a two-in-one uh, situation, di ba? I know the one, but I lost my chance to compete in one in one championship. In fact, uh, yung usapan namin nung, nung guy handling the, um, the fights, sabi, oh, you come back, you know, let's discuss it again. It never happened then. For, for one reason or another, hindi na natuloy yun. Sabi ko, shit, I missed my opportunity. Until this came about. And sabi ko, sarili ko, maybe this time, Hindi na dapat ako lumalaban, but I do something else for the organization. Kaya when that, uh, when the auditions came about, talagang nagpapasalamat ako sa lahat ng tiyulong ninyo kasi ang daming nag-show ng support. Alam mo na yung masamang nangyari doon, Sir Munch? My Instagram account got deleted. Kasi tinan off ko yung, I, I turned off my Instagram account for, for two weeks. I had X number of followers there. I turned it off for two weeks. Instagram deleted it. Nawala yung video wherein everyone was showing their support. So, I, you know, I really felt bad about it. But, you know, that's, that's fine. But again, thank you so much for the support. And that's basically the story behind it. I'm sorry, medyo long-winded yung story, pero that's the reality. You know? So, these opportunities come to you and, you know, in turn, you let them go, then something else comes about. Good. Yeah. Okay, my, my final question. I'll just skip the other questions because you, you already talked uh, about it. No? Um, going to back to the contest, okay, the apprentice. Now you are the only gentleman among ladies. Okay. Yes, sir. How does that feel for you? And what do you think are your chances? And who is your... Who do you think is your uh, number one uh, nemesis, as they say? Nemesis, <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, serious, okay. let, let me let me first. So there are several layers, layers to that question. No? The questions. So let me answer the first question. Um, to be brutally honest, I don't really care if my co-competitor or co-candidate is a male or a female. I treat everyone. We are on a level playing field. So, lahat ng mga candidates dito, they're here for a reason. For several reasons, but the main reason is that Chatri, because he's part of the uh, of the evaluation of candidates na pumapasok, he found distinct strong characteristics and abilities sa bawat tao na kinuha niya to be part, part of the apprentice. So, I don't see any difference whether you're a male or a female. To me, we're here, and there's a reason why we're here. And probably see, probably Chad sees some greatness in you na pwede niya ma-unlock once you become his apprentice. So let, let me clarify that first. As a number. You know, I treat everyone equally. Everyone is on a level playing field. Second, how does it feel to be surrounded by ladies? Um, I'm married. So it doesn't really matter to me um, if for whatever I, I don't I don't really find them attractive. They're beautiful, but I'm not attracted to them, of course, especially because my wife is here listening to me. <laughs> no, but but bottom line is doesn't doesn't matter to me, no. Um, if they're there. One other thing, by the way, in my experience as a manager, most of my staff members are women. 
and they're very capable. They're very strong, capable women. And without them, I would not have succeeded in my career. So I appreciate them. I, I owe a lot to them. And I think the last question was, who is my emphasis? Or let's just say, sino yung nakikita kong pinakagaling yung competitor? Uh, off the bat, I think that because of her experience, her advanced, let's just say, um, I wouldn't say age, but she's more advanced than the others. I would say, um, I would say that it's Pauline because of her maturity. You know? Your maturity you brings so many things into the competition. She has an operations background. She has a marketing background. She knows her numbers. Um, she's well-versed. Thing on sa, sa brands, branding, and you know, she, she, she's basically the total package. First of all, I think that meron siyang, ano eh, meron siyang truth, uh, truthfulness in her. You know, she's very authentic. If she doesn't like something, she will tell you uh, directly, but she will not be disrespectful. So I'm not sure if that is because she has an Asian background, you know, yung Asians mo, um, meron silang or meron tayo rather na, uh, what do you call this, meron tayong character of not shaming people, parang meron tayong, uh, I wouldn't say humility, yeah, but meron tayong practice wherein we're very respectful. And she strongly shows that in competition, regardless if she likes you or not. So she has a way of really putting things out there that's very respectful, very professional. So yeah, actually it would be Polina. No? All right. Thank you, Idol. That was a uh, very good talk. Okay lang magtagal. I can listen to you all day. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. By the way, see, Arabel also has a question later. Uh, for oh, yes, yes. I'm really happy to answer. Thank you, yes. Prof. Uh, we have a question from Louis Morales of Philstar. Go, Louis. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good morning, Louis. Uh, congratulations oh, on making it this far, you know? Um, but yeah, you mentioned a lot of your experiences in your life before being an MMA champion and then, of course, you know, beating cancer you had the choice. and also a lot, a lot more uh, challenges in your life. Uh, how, have the, how has this, you know, uh, helped you or equipped you for The Apprentice and all the challenges that, you know, you face on the show, not just physical, but also the business challenges in the boardroom? I remember one of my mentors, no? Uh, CEO of, of one of the biggest insurance companies here in the Philippines. He, he and I, because I was his EA and I was the head of corporate planning for, for the company, it took me one time. Eh. So I go, you know what, boss? I get so frustrated of, of a lot of things that happen, that happen in my life at work. That happen. You know what he said? I credit him for, for sharing this with me. Sabi niya, frustration is inspiration. Una, hindi ko na-gets. Parang, wow, lalim, ah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, and the next thing you know, frustration is inspiration. So, uh, when you're frustrated, don't you get inspired to do stuff? Oh, yeah, I do. I, I move from frustration to action. So, uh, and, that's, and that's the bottom line. Eh. Whether you're inspired or you're frustrated, it should move you to action. That's why it's just, you know, one or the other. It's just, uh, it's just flipping it, right? What does that have to do with your question? In my life, I'm damning frustrations and damning failures in the sa buhay. And uh, instead of you know having a victim mentality and blaming the world for things that I didn't get, I started flipping that around. And I said, okay, so I'll, I'll probably do more things now. I, I, I can only do things that I can manage. And yung, in my readings, in my studies, I didn't realize that it's what Stoics call the dichotomy of control. So you do things, especially things that you can do at the present and which you have control of. Okay? Cancer, wala na ako magagawa dyan eh. I, I cannot explain why I had it. You failures ko sa buhay, you know, the, the market wasn't right. I can, I can blame the market. Maybe I, 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 I didn't do something right. But all of these failures, all of these experiences, especially yung mga talagang sobrang sama na nangyari sa akin, have prepared me and have really made me so resilient that to the point na parang nothing can really hurt me, no? Um, and, and, you know, that, that may sound arrogant, but it's the reality. Yun yung realization ko sarili ko. Kasi we have to be very honest with ourselves. Eh. 
ano ba yung mga ka, ano ba yung mga kasakit sa akin? And itong experience nito, aside from making me resilient, they make me grateful and appreciate the things that I have now, no matter how small they are. This experience with the apprentice is not a small thing. It's a big thing. Kaya nga, napaka-grateful ko for these experiences. And for people who, like Sir Moncha Perez, who have been very supportive of my journey from the very start. Okay? Most of all, aside from the apprentice, I think that my experiences have not only prepared me for, but for what is happening now. You know, yung, yung, yung pandemia. It's a, that's, a bigger, that's a bigger problem eh, that we have now. Mm-hmm. So, kailangan nating danasan talaga yung paghihirap to, first of all, make us tougher. And second, appreciate what we have and what we don't have. So, I, I don't know if that completely answered your question, but I, I look at things from a bigger, much bigger perspective kasi. And, and you know, that, that keeps me grounded and that keeps me in a way humble dun sa, sa nangyayari sa tuwe ko. Thank you for your question, Katuayo. Yes. Um, another follow-up, I would say, uh, Sir Luby, um, you know, at this point in the show, uh, you are the lone male and mostly surrounded by, you know, Westerners. Eh. Um, do you think at that point na nagkaroon po ng any pressure on your end na, you know, not just representing the Philippines, but also, you know, mostly uh, Asian, uh, you know, entrepreneurs in the show? Okay. Um, so, I, 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 first of all, I'd like to be very honest. You know, I want to... I just want to share with everyone that regardless if you're white, black, Asian, whatever, I think that we're all human beings mm-hmm. and we have to look at people from that perspective, the values that we have, what we bring to the table, table as our skill sets, not based on our color, not based on our culture. Of course, that has an impact. Um, so to your, to your point, regardless if Putita or Asian or you're black, Whatever it is, I think all of us have something to offer. All of us may possess certain qualities that are common in other cultures. And I don't think that's really a differentiator. My, my experiences as an entrepreneur are a bit different. Because I have my own very small sole proprietorship where I do, when I do consulting services. It's hard because I'm starting it on my own. And but I think that, that, that experience, that journey, is experienced by a lot of startups. Maraming tao na existing pa lang. And uh, in that case, that is common. That is common, right? I think na naroromanticize lang natin minsan eh. I'm proud to be Filipino and that's the reason why I have this plan behind me. To remind myself, <laughs> to remind myself I'm Filipino. But again, when we go out there into the world, I don't want to have, you know, these, these foreign classes in front of me saying, ah, kasi ganito siya, ganyan siya. Kasi, Kaya kung matay may biases eh. Pero as much as possible, iwasan, iwasan natin yun. Because that will now prevent us from seeing further eh. You know, when, when, I, when I became uh, the project manager for, for Valor, for the second business challenge, I know for a fact that Clinton was not welcomed by, by, the, by the ladies if, if you follow the, the yeah. competition. And we should be still. But, but behind the scenes, I was able to work really well with Clinton. Not because I'm a guy, but because I listened to what he what he wanted to do with. Clinton has very, very you know, amazing ideas. Hindi lang siya maka-execute. So sabi ko sarili ko, if I go to Clinton, listen to him, and I work with him in the execution and the implementation, I think we'll get far. At marami kaming nagawa. The letter to to um to Andas and all that. Kami gumawa niyan eh. Of course, siguro hindi na na-acknowledge kasi napaka na nga nung, nung issues kay Clinton. I mean, that's the whole point. When, he, when we work with people, let's try to siguro minimize our own biases, right? And, and look at people for what they have to contribute and what they stand for in terms of their values. And I think, you know, that will get us far, not just in, in, in business, but even, even in our per- personal lives. So, yun. Sorry, ang haba again ang nagsabot po. I just really want to express myself. Kasi maganda yung tanong mo eh. Napaganda ng tanong mo eh. Thank no you. Worries, sir. Thank you and good luck for the rest of the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Louis. Uh, we have Sir Ivan. Sir Ivan. Hi, Sir Ivan. Hi, Sir Louis. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Kito. Question ko lang kasi nga, medyo nakatulong din yung early, yung early surge nyo sa Valor. Kasi nga, I believe first 
first two challenges na business kayo nanalo. So, kahit pa paano, sit ka, sit ka, wala ka sa first two boots. Pero kung sa kasakaling, kayo yung nabaliktad, kayo yung lagi natata, nagkatalo sa simula, parang may bang, may bang pina, parang baka ako na yung magiging first boot ng season na to. Can you repeat the last part, sir? Kung tuloy-tuloy yung pagkatalo natin. Kung, yan, kasi, kung sa kasakaling baliktad, yung way sa well, kayo yung nagkatatalo sa simula, parang may bang to, Memang ka ba na baka ako yung maging first boot ng season na to? Yun. Okay. May tinapuha ko na yung tanong mo. You know, ever since I came out of uh, yung experience ko, experience ko with cancer, and, and the funny thing is, I don't really, I never really talked about my experience in cancer until na-highlight siya because of of the publicity and, and the, the um, attention that I got from all of the crazy things that I've been doing. I've been practicing um, I've been practicing something. It's called premeditato malorum. Okay? Premeditato malorum is a practice again by Stoics wherein they question every single day at ang tanong nila sa sarili na is what is the worst thing that can happen to me today? What is the worst thing that can happen in a given situation? That practice, especially if you do that on a daily basis and you internalize that, it will... At least in my case, it helped me always look at the situation not from a negative point of view, but from a more realistic point of view. To your question, Sir Ivan, of course, everyone who will be on the losing end will always think about or will always be worried. If you practice premeditatum alone, that actually helps you. It. Because it gives you now the confidence to, to think, now, okay, I'm a mortal being. This is the thing that I should focus on. And if you do that and you're in, and you're encountering all of these, you know, all of these failures, what do you realize mo? Number one, that there are so many other things that you should be looking at na pwede mong gawa ng paraan. So we lost the business challenge. So we lost the physical task. And it has happened. Natalo. It can demoralize you eh. But you should not be stuck in that position. You should move forward. You should always look at what's next and you focus on what's in front of you. Yun yung pinaka-importante. You know, the mind plays a lot of tricks on us. Pag naisip natin, lagi tayong talo ka, oh shit, baka, baka tanggalin na ako, or you know. But if you're confident in your abilities, you know that you've brought in a lot of value. You know for a fact that if you're faced with a situation that's going to be so difficult, ready ka, because you've been practicing that, that principle, dapat hindi ka kabahan eh. Uh, dapat sila ang kabahan sa'yo. Because you know, that in that position, you can deliver and you're really of value to the organization. Yeah. So follow up lang kasi nga. Yeah. Yeah. Follow up na because yung yeah, first twist ng season na yun, yung first, yung first season na yun, ngayon, walang nangyaring first butan. Unang elimination, walang nangyari. So, bihira lang yung mangyaring ganun. Yung mapasa sa apprentice, mapasa TAR, mapasa survivor, PDB. Bihira lang yung walang nangyaring first elimination agad. So, were you surprised na, na after the first elimination, walang natanggal? Uh, okay. Balikan ko yung wala kong sinabi kanina. I, I went into the competition without any real strategy. So talagang hindi ko iniisip kung ano mangyari. And I think part of it also was to expect the unexpected. You know, I, I, I talk about this with, with in some of my classes with some friends. We, we don't really know what's going to happen. And once it happens, syempre, ano din yung surprise, di ba? Pero ako ang practice kasi when, when I'm faced with it that I'm, I'm not expecting, tinatagal ko pa agad eh. Dito, hindi ko kapaniwala. Especially noong paglabas niya, parang, oh, wow, ganit na nangyari, ganyan. You know, in the back of our heads, we, we knew. We already knew na since walang tinanggal in this first elimination, it's possible na magkaroon ng bubble elimination in the next... Alam mo, ganang mag-isip yung mga tao, ha? They're, they're, very, they're very smart. Ah, walang tinanggal na yun. How many days are we, are we supposed to be here? How many episodes ang isang season? Ganun pa ang pinisip yung mga tao. So when they start computing that, maybe... I don't need to I don't need to verbalize it. Kasi sinasabi na ng mga kasama ko yun eh. I just listen and say, ah, oh, okay, you make sense. Ah, hindi ko alam yan. Okay, so probably. 
So again, you accept it and you know, you just prepare for it if that happens and you know. Pero maganda yung tanong nyo kasi syempre, kung ikaw nga naman nandun, hindi mo alam, di ba? Hindi <laughs> mo alam kung, kung mamaya, alam mo kayo, tatanggalin. And I think there is actually one, I'm not just for anything, but there was actually, I think, one or two instances wherein uh, sinabi sa amin ni Chatri, you know what? I actually wanted to fire all of you. And I think nangyari na yun in the episodes. <laughs> I said, I'm going to perform. It's possible. It's highly possible. Okay, one last question. Kasi yun nga, okay. napanood pa na palagong recently, bang video mo na maroon kang Paro, you were in a, you were part pala ng isang MMA promotion dati na your somehow an officer yon or pang organizer. So, do you think nating advantage yon na to make it this far sa athletics niya that you were once organizing an MMA promotion before? Okay, uh, let me clarify. I was not organizing an MMA promotion. I I was part of an MMA promotion or I was part of a few MMA promotions as a fighter. So, I was part of that. Hindi ako Hindi ako nagpo-produce. Um, the second uh, part is, I also commentate. So I get invited to commentate for promotions and that's what I, I did. There was one time actually pala, when I was still part of a, an integrated uh, resort slash casino slash hotel, we're in nagpa-boxing event kami. So you and I officially was part of that promotion, but because it was for the company, I was part of the team who produced that. But, but I was not, I did not come up with any promotions. Maybe in the future, you know, baka pag hindi lang ang help ko kayo. So, to the second part of your question, of course, merong, merong ano, may advantage that you know the business, right? You know how events are done, you know how fighters should be prepared, uh, you know the rules. Talaga may advantage yun. I will not deny that, that, uh, that fact. Pero yung business is a chatry ng one championship is not just events. It's not just MMA. They are now in media. They are in esports. Who knows where they will be five to ten years from now? And you know, even si Chatri wants to keep on evolving and growing the, the organization. And that's that's something that's very admirable about him. He's a visionary. Right. Salamat po, Sir Louis. Thank you very much, Sir. Thanks, Sir Ivan. Thanks, Sir Ivan. Uh, we have a question from Sir Brian Yalong, sir. Yes, uh, thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning, uh, uh, Louis. Uh, yes, uh, I just have two questions because one of the questions was already answered. No, My first one, seeing you are a business-minded individual, is this an avenue you may take seriously regardless if you win or lose? Oh, okay. Well, okay, go ahead. Uh, and the, uh, the rest of the question goes, if you are already into it, do you have any personal goals ahead? Oh, wow. Uh, Napaka-deep no? Napaka ng tanong niya pag galing sa business. Pero appreciate it. It helps me sharpen my, my uh, interviewing skills. First, uh, I left corporate uh, in 2017. I took an early retirement actually uh, to start my own small consulting business and to teach. So I got an offer to teach in university and that teaching gig or that teaching um, profession has actually gone to up to three universities. So I was teaching, I'm not sure if I can mention them, but I was teaching in three universities. I was teaching my specialization in procurement, uh, supply management, and now I'm teaching entrepreneurship in, in one of the universities. When I went into teaching and I went into consulting, I realized when a major year in balance, so I had to let go of two of the universities and I focused on my consulting business. Your questions are, yes, I am very much business focused. I really want to grow the organization, especially ngayon. And why is it that I want to grow the organization now? It's because number one, marami tayong SMEs na kailangan ng tulong. My, my business is really focused on SMEs and I really want to help them grow, especially dun sa service na na dinideliver ko. Pangalawa, a lot of people need work. And if I can just help one or two people in my in my business, you know, may, may mabigay lang ako sa kanila. Ang laking tulong na yun sa taong yun. And it's also like, you know, validate why, why I actually put it up. It's not just because I want to make money. If I wanted to make money, I should stay in corporate. Okay, may dinigito ko dun. But I really wanted to develop the organization to help 
business business people, SMEs. I wanted to help people na mer nagaharap ng trabaho. At the same time, guide them. Who knows down the line, magtayo rin sila ng sarili ng consulting company that will feed their families and that will have a multiplier effect. So yun yung first. I'm very focused on that. On your second question, um, pagdating dun sa, sa organization, uh, I, I think that um, so yung, yung one championship for me is a platform where I could learn a lot. To be very honest with everyone here, when I left for Singapore to participate in the production of this show, iniwan ko lahat eh. Iniwan ko yung clients ko. But of course, I, I terminated my contracts properly. Meaning, tinapos ko pa rin until the very end. Fortunately, natapos siya while I was there. I think I was a couple of weeks in Singapore and in the contract. My client wanted to extend my contract for another five years. And lacking opportunity nun. And this is not just not any client. This is actually a government agency working with the World Bank. So, sayang yung opportunity yun. Pero may nisip ko kasi back of my head na marami akong matututunan from Chatri, marami akong matututunan sa One Championship that I can now bring as learning to my own business. And, and for me, that is the risk that I really wanted to take. Baga, marami, marami akong nag-collect lessons. Whether I win or, or lose. Uh, so, I guess yun yun. I, I don't know if I was able to completely answer your second question. Uh, but, but yes, uh, yun po. Yun po yung talagang goals ko pagdating sa, uh, sa pagsali to dito. Okay, for my last question, it's actually a question I also threw to Lara. No? Would competing in one be an option for you seeing you're a mixed martial arts practitioner? If so, would you balance it with work or focus on it entirely? Ah, of course. Um, so, Kanina, I, I mentioned that uh, during the time to walk the North Pole Marathon, I was also offered to fight in one. I was not able to get that uh, option because I just had that option. But I was just saying that now, of course, I will say yes. I want to move on, especially at the global level. But I also have to be honest with myself, right? If I want to move on, I want to one time, big time, or you know, I probably fight a couple of times. The reality is, so kanina, pinag-usapan na, natin na when I left corporate, when I turned 40, I put up my own consulting, I started teaching, and I went back to martial arts. Nung time na ako nakalaban sa one championship, another local organizer invited me to fight. So after 17 years of being away in MMA, I actually fought, I had my comeback fight in 2019 in Palawan. This is a professionally sanctioned fight. So after 17 years, bumalik ako. Unfortunately, I won over the nephew of Luisito Espinosa. So Luisito Espinosa's nephew joined MMA, and you know I, I won against the guy. He's really good. Pero siya nerdy tayo dun sa episode nayon. Sayang na kasi na kung ano pandemya, hindi nagtalay talay yung yung fighting career nayon. All right, thank you. Great answers, Louis. Thank you so much and good luck. Thanks, sir Brian. Ah, sir Monch. Uh, Naka-raise pa po kayo ng hands. May questions po kayo. Hi, good morning everyone. I'm Arabel Jimenez, Beautiful Life slash Monster Chronicles. So, um, I want to go back to that boardroom challenge, you know, because I'm so intrigued because um, you, it was a big factor for where you are at now, right? Um, can you expound more about the tourism industry, how you can help the Philippines at least, you know, in the middle of this pandemic? Okay, um, are we talking of the uh, of episode six, Young Ever Rise, wherein we, okay. So uh, episode episode six uh, was for Ever Rise. Ever Rise is a customer experience oh. company, basically they're a BPO, they have offices here as well. And I, I knew, na it would be a very difficult challenge kasi nga pinag-usapan yung travel industry. Now, pagdating dun sa travel industry, we were given several options, ma'am. Ang sabi sa amin, okay, you can focus on um, making the tourism industry recover or whatnot, or you can look at it from the perspective na it's already recovering and what value can you bring in. So, kung nga, inisip namin, and also, because of the fact that I have an insurance background, 
life insurance background, general insurance background. So I you know, why, why don't we talk about providing travel insurance for people? And when I mentioned that to the team, surprisingly, many of them have had very negative experiences of the things of travel insurance or insurance in general. What happens is, if they have a case in their country, they are injured, they are suffering. The travel insurance they don't use because there are many issues and many red tape or bureaucracy that happens before they can actually claim. By the time that they claim. Malamang meron na silang gastos, meron na silang nilabas na pera. And that's not convenient, right? So, specific to that business challenge, nakikita namin ang mga katulong siya sa travelers, and this would be um, a product or a service that can be implemented kapag nakapag-recover na yung tourism industry. Not necessarily to help the tourism industry recover. Okay? So I, first of all, I'd like to make that very clear. Po. Kasi yung, yung approach natin na yun actually made them, you know, look at us from a different perspective. That's the reason we, we overwhelmingly won. Sayang hindi sinabi ni Chatri 10 out of 10 because he did say that behind the scenes. 10 out of 10 daw yun. That was the perfect business challenge. I was so proud of it and so proud of my team. However, your question about how to help the industry recover, travel industry recover, you know, I've, I've lived in several provinces in the Philippines. I consider myself Filipino, not not in not from any region. I can speak Bisaya, I can speak Ilocano, but I'm not from any region. I'm Filipino, and I think one of the things that we can do to help to help start or you know um, jumpstart the travel industry natin is first of all, I think we should start kind of opening up some some lang ah, not all tourist locations, but we do that in a very responsible manner. Also. Okay, I think when you implement them, you mga ito ngayon. First, you know, you have to like in Singapore, they have a very good way to trap tourists and individuals. And when I say they have a very good way of doing it, standard. Also, kana ng mall nila, you use one app to trap to trap your to trap who you are. Tapos pag pag nagtasakit ka, easily and may identify nila kung sino ka. I think we have to have, first of all, a very efficient and standard way of tracking individuals. So that wherever you go in the Philippines, especially sa mga tourist areas na to, kailangan kang ma-identify, kailangan malaman exactly kung nasaan ka if needed, especially if you're high risk. So, and you know, yung issues dyan, of course, around like, you know, uh, confidential information, et cetera. So that's, that's beha beha besides the point. The second is that, I think that if we do open up, we have to really observe the mga protocols that we should have as a kasuyan. And you know, I will not go into detail about it. You know, we have a separate government agency that does that. But I think that we need to learn nothing to undergo these procedures really well. Hindi natin dinadaya, kasi you know, fraud and whatever is occurring nito. So it is that when we when we go there. Let's let's really support the locals and then you know the proprietors. If they if they are suffering and they want to charge higher, ako ang paniniwala ko lang. Let them charge higher and let's pay. Let's pay even more so. Kasi nagigirap na ngayon tao eh, di ba? Nagigirap na ngayon tao. Tapos hindi ka pati ng sound. Wala na yung pumapasok na negosyo eh. Let's expect things to be more expensive and accept that as part of our way of helping these people. And probably the last one is that let's, and this is a practice, right? yung, yung sustainable tourism. You know, respect we natin yung customs and culture. Let's respect the environment by not, you know, um, let's not deface, you know, these tourist attractions. But I'm not going to go on. And uh, well, that's, that's a given. And fifth pala, Let's support them by raising awareness. You know, everyone has a phone now. If you want to promote something, give them a good review. You know, you 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 talk about your experience everywhere. And I think that's going to help boost tourism more than you know uh, showing the really nice places. Talk about how they can get there. You know, para, oh, I'm, we're here in, in this location, and to get here, you need this budget. Please be aware. And I have to do this again and again. Let's practice it. I think a lot of a lot of things that we can do are actually in raising awareness to the tourism industry natin. 
I, I hate it. Because I hate the fact that we can't travel because my wife loves to travel. Ako, uh, alalay lang ako eh. Pero, you know, these are where we create so many memories. Kaya, I really miss it. And, you know, the Philippines really needs it. Us being a, a really great tourist destination, a, a global tourist destination. I hope we can recover from it very soon. So, I'm very passionate about this. Eh. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Maraming salamat, Louie. And it's also a very good advocacy, not only for whatever you're doing right now, but for every Filipino. Thank you. Thank you. We'll have, we'll have a new job. ASIC. <laughs> DOT. <laughs> Pwede ka na. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Arabelle. Thank you. Thank you, Pop. Uh, may follow-up question lang from Sir Mike. Uh, since your stand is expect the unexpected, do you think it has worked to your advantage up to this point and why you're still in contention? Um, I think the reason why I'm still around is because, well, the mindset helps, of course. But I think the, re the main reason why I'm still around in the competition is because I think Chatri sees and Niharika, they both see that I really give a lot of effort whether I'm the PM or whether I'm an individual contributor. When you're part of something, don't, don't just be a fence-sitter. You're aggressive. Then you find how you're going to make your mark in the things that you do. So, so that you bring value. My business, that's what I do. You know, I, I try to bring in value for the companies and the people I work, I work with, I work for. And in this case, I think that's what they see. Regardless of, again, whether I'm a PM or I'm an individual contributor. Second, I don't, I don't really bullshit it. I, I, don't, I don't like BS. So I'm very upfront and I usually don't say anything. I don't say anything. Pero in the boardroom, I only open my mouth and have a very important point to say. And you know, may 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 kasabihan tayo eh, na parang you know, um, may ano yung empty can, di ba? Or silent waters run deep the other way around. If if you have nothing important to say, then just shut up, right? So I I don't want to participate in all of these gossiping, hearsay, and all that. It's a waste of time. So it's, it really is a waste of time and a waste of effort, energy. So I open my mouth when I have a very important thing to say. And I think that that also conveys the fact that, you know, I'm a very straightforward guy. So, see in a second. And third, I think that, you know, on the thing Chatri, I just hope, and maybe this is just my impression of him, I think he can see how determined I am in terms of proving, proving myself to not just him but to the rest of the world that we, you know, Filipinos in general, we can we can be global. We can be global leaders. Uh, anywhere, anywhere. So, I mean, I'm not I'm not the first apprentice. In fact, you know, there was there was a guy before me, Mr. Jonathan Yabut, who has excelled so much. And you know, I, I give a lot of um, respect and my so much for achieving so much as to what he has done. But I also want to continue that legacy. Tayo, global talaga yung Pilipino, eh, di ba? And I think he sees that determination in me. Eh. So maybe that's just an assumption, but again, these are the three things that I'd, I'd like to really uh, expose from the Pitbulls, uh, the reason why I'm still here. So I, I contribute, whether I'm a PM, for individual contributor, and I bring value to the table. Um, second is that, you know, I'm, I'm authentic. And I think people who know me know, know that the, I only say things when they're important. And I think I'm very driven. So I want to prove that, you know, we are world class. So we're gonna... Yeah, thanks, Louis. Uh, we have a question from Joshua Benaventura. Josh? Hi, Louis. Good to see you. Yes, uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, Josh from ANCX. Uh, so just wanted to ask you, 
Um, can you share several more probably special experiences with Chachi? Like, how is he as a boss? And would you say he's the same person on and off camp? Those kinds uh, of things. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> I don't want to spoil the following episodes. Mas marami kaming, but one thing I can say is mas marami kaming interaction with, with Chatri in the succeeding business challenges. One thing that I admire about Chatri is that he's a visionary. I said this earlier, but to really drill down the point of, of him being a visionary, imagine putting up a, an MMA gym and an MMA promotion in Singapore people are very, let's just say, conservative. Conservative in the fact that, you know, I mean, they're not really exposed to this kind of controlled violence or the, this kind of sport. But yet, he chose to put up, uh, you know, a fighting promotion there or a mixed martial arts promotion there. He could have set it up in the Philippines. He could have set it up in Thailand. And I'm sure there are advantages to putting it in Singapore. Pero that, that risk paid off. He has so many investors now, people believe in what he does. Fighters want to be part of one championship. So I think he's a visionary. Also coming from Wall Street, that shows that he's not just a visionary, but he can back it up. He knows, basically he knows his shit. So he's a finance guy, he's an operations guy. And sabi niya nga later on, he realized that he's also a creative person pala, that he can do marketing. And it shows in the quality of products, and you know, advertisements and, and what have you, media that that one championship comes up, comes out of, uh, comes up with. Second is that uh, Chatri is actually a very kind human being. You know, when we see him on TV, and I'm guilty of that sometimes. But Chatri, kasi mo tinig mo parang tapang tapang, you know, he has this very uh, stern look or scowl, parang kalmo ako ini kanya. That also comes from very quiet confidence. But the reality is he's a very kind individual. And, and where, do I, where do I see this? Again, at the risk of preempting stuff, Chatting is actually, and the and one championship supports a lot of social, uh, social civic organizations. You know, if you go to their website, you'll see who their partners are. They support a lot of, uh, of uh, NGOs here in the Philippines as well. Hindi niya kailangan i-promote yung sarili niya because it already shows na willing siyang tumulong sa mga tao. Second, I've never seen, well, you know, every now and then, especially if you're in the MMA community, people will talk shit about the promoters or the organizers of the sport. But Chatri, his fighters, I think most of them, probably 90% of them, talk really well of him. And that, that is something, diba? When you say, na, oh yeah, he takes care of fighters. Well, I remember there was one incident, unfortunate incident in, in the early days of one championship that resulted in the change of the rules in terms of weight cuts. And that comes from consideration. So if sa fighters mo, and you know what they go through because you were a fighter yourself, then you'd understand. So I think that is a point of pagiging kind. And I think most of all, he is kind because he is not selfish in his in his um, advice or the way he prefers you because we, we have also a very, a very limited, uh, we have very limited interactions with Chatri behind the scenes every time uh, he says something he imparts with his own knowledge eh. and that shows that this person maybe kind is not the right word but he's not selfish he's not selfish in his teachings. He also wants you to succeed. He also wants you to succeed in your own endeavors. So, you know, that, that's who he is of them. All right. Thank you, Louis. Thanks for that great answer. Thank you, Thanks, Louis. Uh, yeah. I think we have last question from Serena, pero hindi yata gumagana yung mic niya, so she just sent it in. Uh, I'd like to ask, among the challenges you faced on The Apprentice, which was the most difficult for you? What was the toughest physical task and business task? Um, the physical task. The most challenging physical task overall, uh, to date, kung hindi pa pinapalapas niyo ang episodes, is the Dragon Ball. 
uh, competition. And then I say that not because, not just because may hirap mag-row, but you have to row in a synchronized manner. If one person gives up or does not give 100 percent, magiging tagilid yung buong team. This actually mirrored the very first physical task that we went through. Hindi namin kilala yung sabi We had to depend on gut feel, on, on how everyone presented themselves, to actually have trust and confidence in that person to deliver. So, nung grab and book competition na, nung race na, syempre kilala na namin isa't isa. Alam na namin tayo pa paano yung mga capabilities namin. Hindi ko na kine-question yun eh. Ang kine-question mo ngayon is, oh, well, we can perform as a team. When you are doing uh, drag and book race, uh, rowing, uh, hindi lang yung arms mo, yung back mo, yung shoulders mo gumagali. You even use your legs and your core. So, it's a total body workout. Kaya nga yung rowing is a total body workout eh. Napakahirap niya, napakataxing niya sa katawan. So I think that's the first uh, answer uh, in terms of physical task. In terms of the business challenge to take, na meaning ko, yung second challenge na PM ako was the most difficult, yung Everize. And I say that because we were not uh, only asked to come up with a pitch and had financials in them, very, very concrete financials. We also had to create a marketing campaign around it and an implementation plan. Most of all, we had to do that with the idea that we were launching it either during the pandemic or as, a, as the pandemic, oh, sorry, as the situation of the pandemic starts to get better. So, napakahirap nun eh. How do you come up with something na alam mong pag-ilid yung industriya, tapos isipin mo, okay, as, as things get better, ito yung gagawin natin. Then, it was also a difficult um, topic to, to actually take on. Sabi lang, no travel insurance. Painful, painful experiences for everyone. So, I think that was, that was, uh, that was it. No? Very challenging in times, uncertain yung future, and yet, we had to deliver a product or a service that will work. Thanks, Louis. Uh, do we have any questions from the media? Thank you, sir. Mm, I think that's it. Siguro before we let you go, Louis, if baka may message ka to your fans, supporters, and to the media we have here today. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you so much for giving me your time today. Um, I know that it has not been easy for everyone, so let's hang in there. Uh, I think yun yung, yung pinaka-importante, no? Uh, let's try to help each other out to extend a helping hand to, especially to our neighbors and our co our Filipino countrymen. Any way we can, no? not necessarily financial, but any way we can. Um, let's be strong. That's the first thing I want to say. And second, I really, 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 from the bottom of my heart, want to thank everyone for supporting me, for supporting us, no? me and Lara, on The Apprentice. Hindi madali, uh, especially for, for Filipinos, to actually prove themselves. When you know that napakaraming tao pang wedding, let's just say, like, you know, people would say, na, oh, but these people, these people deserve to be there, whatever. A lot of people deserve to be wherever they are. But even more para sa atin, because we have so many challenges. Eh. We come from a, a country, a developing country, and we are competing with people from countries that are well developed, have all the technology, have all the knowledge, have all the learning. So imagine may contain disparity bond. If you're not one of the Filipinos, you actually have work in, in, a, in a developed country or in a developed sector. So we appreciate the support that you give us. Um, so really the last thing that I want to say is that whatever happens, okay, whatever happens in this competition, you know, we will do our best. I mean. Nara is not in the competition anymore. And I'm sure that she is really doing well now in whatever she's doing. But, you know, of course, I will do my best. But, uh, you know, um, this flag again reminds me of the country I'm from. And, of course, I nothing. I just want to tell you the Philippines in all the things that I do. So I hope that, I hope that we win. And, you know, I hope that... Whatever happens, you will continue to remain, be proud of the things that I do. I don't know 
I hope that you can still support me in spite of all the potential failures that I, that I may uh, that may happen. So please continue watching The Apprentice and uh, you know uh, support everyone. <laughs> if I'm not your favorite, that's fine. Support your favorite candidate, and uh, that's that's it, I guess. So just just uh, just keep supporting the organization. Because maraming palang maraming pang plans yung one championship na gusto na may deliver sa buong mundo. There you have it. Thanks, Louis. Uh, thank you po sa lahat ng dumating and umatayin sa ating media availability. Uh, for sure, may, yeah, mak- may makasusunod pa. <laughs> so, for the may lima pa ang remaining episodes ang The Apprentice that you can watch on AXN and One Sports. AXN every Thursday, 9 p.m. and One Sports uh, every Monday, 9 p.m. then. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. If may questions pa po kayo, you can email us or contact us. Uh, Lark, si Ma'am Tessa, ako. And we will send a recording of this session later within the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Have a good day. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Idol. Tessa, thank you. Thank you. Keith, thank you so much. Mia, salamat. Hey, you can go. What's up, Pete? Nice one. Nice one. Haba. Haba. Hey, take a look at